They let me in. Yeah, I can I can see why they call it Raincouver. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go get dry. Hey, I'm Stephen. Follow along with me and this series that I'm producing for Moving to Canada, documenting my journey moving from Dublin, Ireland to Vancouver, Canada. This is episode two. Yes, I am here, I have landed in Canada, and I am really beginning to understand why people do not tend to make the move in the depths of winter. First thing is first, week one, it is all about setting up the boring stuff. SIN number, phone plan, bank account. Once I have these three things locked off, I can finally start looking for a job, going looking for like a long-term rental apartment, and also maybe even rent a car, get out of the city and go on a mini adventure up the mountains. First thing is a SIN number. I was hoping to get a SIN number the day I landed in Vancouver Airport as there is a Service Canada Centre in the airport itself. Unfortunately, it was closed. So that does mean that tomorrow morning at crazy o'clock, I have to wake up, go to the Service Canada Centre near my Airbnb, and hopefully, hopefully, try and sort it all out then. Let's get going. Oh, okay. So it is 7.30 a.m. I'm about to walk down to a Service Canada Centre, which is where you need to go to to get an SIN number. The place doesn't open for another like hour and a half. Now this number is really important as it is linked individually to you. So your SIN is your social insurance number. It's basically like your government ID number. And does things with taxes and bank accounts and stuff like that. You can apply for a SIN number online or by mail or in person, which is also the fastest way. So that's what I'm gonna do. I have to wait and hope that not too many people are going to queue up at ridiculous clock in the morning. Okay, so I did try to film me getting my SIN number in the Service Canada building. However, security did come up to me and tell me that it is a federal building, so no cameras. But I will share one nugget of advice for you. If you are moving to Vancouver and you are applying for your SIN number in downtown Vancouver in the Sinclair Centre, don't make the same mistake I made. I spent 40 minutes queuing outside an office that has absolutely nothing to do with the SIN number. Really should have known something was off when I was top of the line. I was informed by the security guard, the same one who told me I couldn't film, that the office I was outside was actually a private company and I had to move 100 meters to my left and when I went around the corner, I met people that had been queuing for over four hours. Luckily, the line for SIN numbers didn't actually take that long and all in all, it took me about 45 minutes from when I started queuing to when I was finally issued my SIN number, which means I can now begin the lovely process of opening a bank account and applying for jobs. Okay. It's hot. It's very hot. I have my SIN number, so now it is time to go and get a phone plan. There are multiple providers that you can choose in Canada and you will notice a price difference on whether you bring your own device or purchase some of the plan. Often it's cheaper to bring your own device. So if you are thinking of getting a new phone, just be aware that it could mean a far more expensive plan. With that in mind, enjoy the show. Turn off those pages and unhook your fax machines. It's time to choose your phone plan. Hi, I'm Rogers. Hi, I'm Telus. Hi. I'm Belle. We're, We're all pretty, pretty much, much the exact, exact same. same. National coverage, 5G capabilities, and we're the most expensive. Hey, I'm Fido. Hey, I'm Kudo. Hey, I'm Virgin. These are our dads. And to be honest, we're all pretty similar too. We use our dad stuff to give you service. For around $50 a month, you get about 12 gigs of data. We're reliable good coverage, good data allowance, but we're not the cheapest. Hey, we're the independent and regional phone providers. Sometimes we're cheaper than those other guys. But you'll have to check your availability and coverage to make sure we're available in your area. Uh, I, uh, actually, yeah, I'm available nationwide. Also, uh, if you choose to go with me, you'll get access to special promotions through the Moving to Canada website where you can unlock exclusive deals on monthly plans, 
get $10 off your first bill and get a SIM card shipped anywhere in the world for free. Basically, we all have our pros and cons, but in each tier, we're pretty much the same. There is some important factors to note before making your choice though. So, take it away, non-sentient foam plan, Stephen. Thank you, Mies. So, Canadian foam plans. Something to keep a note of is the level of documentation that is required. Now, I had originally planned on going with the tier two provider. It was gonna be great. It was gonna be like 12 gigs of data, 50 bucks a month. Amazing. But that particular provider was pretty insistent that I give them my SIN number. It, I didn't have a credit card, okay? So they wanted a SIN number. Now, full disclosure, this does seem like something that's pretty common in Canada, but it's really, really not in Ireland. And I didn't feel comfortable giving a private company my shiny new SIN number. All that being said, I did ultimately go with another tier two provider that actually worked out a little bit cheaper thanks to promotion that they were running at the time. So keep in mind during that first week that the order in which you set yourself up, bank account, phone plan, SIN number, can impact the number of providers that you can actually avail of. Also, keep an eye out for promotions because hey, they're much easier on the bank accounts. Speaking of which, let's go get a bank account. This is a bank. Also, a bank. Another bank. Any guesses what this might be? And this, you get the idea. So here's the thing about me and banks. My parents set me up with a super saver account when I was seven years old, and I just kind of stuck with that one ever since. I feel like most people kind of do the same thing. The point is, I know very little about banks and banking, but moving abroad is all about learning and growing. So here are some things I've learned myself, and hopefully it will help you make a decision when you are choosing who you want to bank with. Side note, if you're already in Canada and have some insight about who you think I should bank with, please comment down below. Now, first things first, there are loads of banks and credit unions all over Canada. Now, the five you've just seen are considered the big five. And as a newcomer to the country, I strongly recommend checking one of those out. Some other banks to check out is HSBC and National Bank of Canada. But here's some other things to keep in mind when you're choosing a new bank. Number one is availability. Now, this won't be an issue if you go with any of the big five banks as they all have nationwide branches. And the ability to go and talk to someone in person should the need arise, especially when it comes to banking, is really a great source of comfort. Number two is the newcomer account. Now, nearly all the big five do offer some form of newcomer bank account for anyone who has just entered the country on a work permit. This usually means you get zero bank fees for at least one year. Now, some banks also offer free international transfers once or twice a month, which is really, really good when you're starting off because it means you can put all your money from your home account into your brand new Canadian one. When you are looking at which bank you should bank with, check out the newcomer accounts as they always have promotions to try and entice newcomers to bank with them. Number three is additional charges and services. So keep in mind that some banks may have charges that you actually haven't heard of before. For example, certain banks will charge you an additional fee if you use an ATM outside of their network. Now this can mean an additional $5 per use to you. Also, daily debit limits are a thing, and this can get really frustrating if you're making large purchases without a credit card. I get that banking isn't exactly the most exciting thing in the world. However, when you have an account, it tends to make life a little bit easier. Now all that being said, the last thing on this list is most certainly the most frustrating. Credit cards. Oh, credit cards. Okay, now this one has me torn. You see, I've never owned a credit card before. I really don't like the idea of spending money that I don't actually own. But it has become annoyingly apparent that living in Canada means that you have to have good credit. Most of the banks do offer newcomer credit cards, which means you either put collateral down or you get a very low limit card. Either way, this does help you start building credit when you first arrive in Canada. As I was brand new in the country and I didn't have full-time employment because YouTube videos don't actually count, I was approved for a secured credit card. Now this means that I put money into my bank account that I cannot actually touch but then the bank gives me a credit card with a limit of that amount. This allows me to build credit by paying off the purchases on the credit card with other savings to then show the bank that I can be trusted with more credit. It is a frustrating process and one that I am not particularly happy about as I was led to believe that I would be approved for a low limit card. On the flip side, you can start earning rewards by using your credit card and each bank does have their own list of incentives. So make sure to check them all out and see which bank's credit card might be of most use to you. So now, after a very chaotic week one, we finally have a SIN number, a phone plan, and a bank account with some version of credit. 
And now all that's left is the really simple tasks of finding an apartment and getting a job and making friends and completely assimilating to a new life in Canada. <laughs> Make sure you're subscribed and notifications are turned on because you don't want to miss the next video where I share everything I've learned about finding a place to rent in Canada. So if you're moving to Vancouver and you want to make sure you get the best place possible to live, the one thing that you have to keep in mind is